this is a, a little 10 minute discussion topic that is actually quite important. I'm going to talk about what is called Gibbs phase rule. Okay? This equation is very easy, very simple. You just have to apply it uh, nicely. And that's a, a physical transformation of pure substance. When I say pure substance means single components. So we are talking about just the one types of matter. So let's say I have a CO2, and I know the CO2 can exist as a solid, liquid, gas, right? We all know that. Uh, what about the water? Water, solid, liquid, and the gas, they all know that. Uh, even the solid, depending on their crystal structure, you have a solid of, I don't know, FCC, BCC, or different types of crystalline structures. So there are different phases that all can exist, right? And, but in the main category is we are talking about solid, liquid, and the gas. And I'm just going to give you a, uh, something that phase diagram. <laughs> so diagram is X and Y axis. I'm going to draw X and Y. And I want to ask you, what is your choice for variable that you want to use in the phase diagram? You can change. What are the variables you want to change? Volume, pressure, temperature, entropy, right? What are the four variables that you're allowed to choose? And I got to pick two. Obviously, this is not my choice, right? I cannot easily change the entropy. Which one will be a more like a scenario that people like to see? What is a phase diagram first obvious choice? Temperature. Temperature is obvious. Right? What about the amount of volume and the pressure? What do you think about that? What, what people? It's actually quite. You, you can go. I can go either way. But most people think about okay. If I apply the pressure, if I apply the pressure. Can I induce a phase changes? That's just something that people want to do. So this is more active variable. I mean, both are active. I can change the one or the other. But this is a more like a choice you take they, they want to choose over the volume. Okay. So because of phase diagram, you're choosing the temperature and the the, the pressure as one. And historically, they would put the pressure in the front and the y-axis, temperature and the x-axis. So that's what. And then you, ha you have to rely on your experience. When you go to the higher temperature, what kind of phases do you have among gas, liquid, solid? Which one do you think you have? Gas. The gas. Right? They also call it vapor. Okay. What about the lower temperature? Because I'm expecting something like a solid here. And I'm expecting something like a gas liquid here, right? So that's kind of the sequence that I see. So in the diagram, typically, that's how you, how you see. So in this certain temperature, certain pressure, you will see liquid here, gas here, and oh no, liquid here, solid here, right? Solid happens at the lowest. Liquid happens, and eventually you got the gas or vapor happens. And the CO2, we, are, we know by our own experience, they go to sublimation. So this is a pressure, let's say ambient pressure. You go to the sublimation, which is solid to gas transition. Right? So if you're pressurizing it, actually, you can see the liquid CO2. Also. And water is not so different. I'm expecting something looks like Gas is here, solid here, liquid here. Okay. Want to see that? Look, this is funny. I, I'm kind of exaggerating this. You see the, the exaggeration part that I, I have shown up? You see the difference between these two? What's the slope here? Positive or negative? This one is actually negative. Okay. And so 
the water is actually quite strange molecule. Can you even does it even this one make sense? The solid is lighter than the liquid. You you see it all the time when you pour the ice water. Water flow, ice flow. I mean, does it make sense? So how come solid has a lower density than the liquid? You always see that liquid is kind of move around and they kind of settle in the position that's a solid. So solid should have a lot a little lower volume than the liquid. Water is different. So that's why actually the, the, the volume change difference is this is normal, this is actually abnormal. So it has something to do with the volume change, and we're, we're going to get to get to do this. But it's a phase diagram is something has to think about how these phase boundaries, right? This is a coexistent line change it when you change the temperature. And this is a essentially a lot of parts is going like this. So that's the first one that I want to kind of the, give us the idea about this. And then the, uh, so this is an example. Two is Gibbs phase one. Gibbs phase row is about the one, and and he using this called degree of freedom. C minus P plus two. Uh, this is one of the easiest equation that, well, simply, simplest equation, but it's pretty much the conceptual. So what this one is saying is C is number of components. Okay, how many components do you have? And if I have, if I draw the phase diagram of P versus T, and this is a typical solid, liquid, and the gas. For let's say CO2, how many? What's the number of components in this phase diagram? Three. Component. Three. This one, right? I'm not talking about CO2 and water mixtures. I only have CO2. That's it. So this is actually a single component. Right? So that's why the single component, pure substance, single component system. So this one is actually intrinsically one okay in the in the chapter five is we are talking about simple mixtures and you are mixing waters and alcohols and, and other things and then this one you're going to have a much more complicated phase diagram this is a for the, the simplest phase diagram that you can ever imagine so this one case is for for the time being the simplest phase diagram i'm dealing with single components okay Okay, and then P is number of phases. Okay, and F is what we call degree of freedom. So this is what Gibbs defined it as degree of freedom, and so let's let's deal with this one one by one. So I am here. Let's say. I'm right here. Okay. So, what is my number of phases at this red dot? One, right? So then, what? One minus one plus two. What is my f? Two, right? So f equal two. Degree of freedom is two. What that means is, I can change the temperature. I can change pressure independently. Still, I'm in the gas phases, okay? So this area is, we have a degree of freedom too. What about at this line, right here? What is your F? If you calculate, that's a one. Okay? And what that means is, yeah, you can, you can change temperature, but you cannot change the pressure independently. There's only one independent variable you can allow when you walk around this phase diagram, phase boundaries. All right? What about here? This is a, your F is zero. You cannot change anything. You are, this is 
fixed point, and this is what we call triple point. Okay, and where you have no degree of freedom, and that's the where solid, liquid, and the gas. So F is single component. You got, uh, and then you got three phases plus two. That's it. And the commonly shown up in the many textbooks shown up here that okay, sometimes uh, you, you will see phases. This is this kind of made of phase diagram. Okay. So you, you're seeing this phase A, solid A, becomes this, becomes that. And then they, they kind of, somebody draw this diagram. This is a single component, pressure and the volume. Pressure and the temperature phase diagram. If, I, if they draw this, yeah, this is all okay, this is okay. This one, if you think about it, your F is here. If, you're, if you do the experiment founding, you know, I have a crystal form A, crystal form B, crystal form C, this is a liquid, and this is a gas, or something like that. So you, you, you figure that out. And if you do that, it's a single component. How many phases? At this point, four, right? And plus two. That's a minus one, right? Which is no. This is not possible. Right? So this phase diagram do not use. So what that means is somebody report the data looks like this. They must miss at something. I'm pretty sure it is like they're missing a window or something looks like that. And then be, everything is fine, right? <laughs> if you if you put, put this, not three, but four phase coexistence, this one is, is wrong. So this is, this report is wrong, okay? So that's a Gibbs phase rule. And single component system is actually three minus P, that's how simple it is. Or if you have a binary mixtures, Tertiary mixtures and then the phase diagram is a lot more complicated because you have a lot more degree of freedom that you can live with. This, can, you, can you follow it? The most important concept is here. There is only one variable that you can change around along the phase diagram. And my final comment do you know what this means? This line? This is where liquid and the gas coexist. Pressure as a versus temperature, right? So I'm gonna delete everything, just focusing on this. This red line, what do you think about that? That's what we call vapor pressure, right? Liquid and the gas coexisting, and how you change the temperature, right? We are, we are looking at the outside of air. When it's hot, the vapor pressure goes up. When it's cold, the vapor pressure is low. Same, right? But I do, I can come up with the exact mathematical equation to predict and, uh, and show how the temperature dependency. Thank you, great.